In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of using the new Substance in Maya plugin. I'm going to show you how to import a substance and work with basic settings such as cache outputs to disk and creating outputs as well as adjusting substance parameters. We are then going to work with a custom substance material and create a custom shader network. I will then show you how to save that custom shader network into a renderer workflow. So now let's dive right in and create a substance node and start texturing this table. So to create the node here in the hypershade, I'm going to hit the tab key. I'm going to do a search for substance and I'm going to use this option for substance node texture. So here in the hypershade, you can see that a substance node has been created for me. With the node selected here in the attribute editor, at the top, there is an option here to load a substance. I can click this folder button to browse for a substance SBS AR file to load into the node. Another option is to simply just drag and drop the SBS AR file here into the hypershade. So let's go that route. We're going to select these nodes. I'm going to delete them for now. The substance in my plugin actually ships with 22 substances from source that you can use. So here in the substance shelf, I'm going to come over to this icon, which opens up the content browser. So we'll left click, we'll open up the content browser. It automatically filters to where the SBSAR files are saved. And I am going to grab the Parquet American Chestnut substance. So this is going to be a wood. And then I can just simply left click and drag and drop this here into the hypershade. And you'll notice that it creates the node for me. We'll select the substance node. And you can see here in the load substance, the substance SBSAR file has been loaded here for me. I can click the graph info button to get any information about this particular substance. Uh, here I can also set my resolution size. Now, we'll come back to resolution in a minute. For now, I want to bring your attention to this substance output settings. Now, this is very important. So in this tutorial, we are going to be rendering with Arnold. Now, anytime you want to use a renderer like Arnold, V-Ray, Redshift, or so on, you're going to need to cache the outputs. So the substance node, you can see here in this output section, is going to create an output, which is a texture that's basically held in video RAM. That texture is not going to be compatible with renderers such as Arnold. So we need to cache that substance texture to a disk and have Maya read that back into the hypershade using a file node, which can then be plugged into our Arnold material. Now, the Substance plugin will handle all this for you by just simply enabling this option to cache outputs. Now, there are a few settings with this. You can see that there is a cache folder location, and it can be set to global, project, or some custom folder. Then we have some file types, so PNG and EXR. The cache file type is uh, specific to outputs that are like 8-bit, so for example, like base color. And then your outputs that need high dynamic range data, such as displacement or height, that's going to be saved out in a high bit depth format, such as EXR. You can also batch bake all of these substance outputs directly from this section here as well. Now, you can set this up as a preference. So let's come over here again to the substance shelf and come over to this gear icon. I'm going to left click on this to open up substance settings. Here's where we can set some global setting values for the substance nodes we'll be working with. For example, we could set a default resolution, a default render workflow, and so on. And here we have settings for our cache outputs. And this is where I set the location for this cache file. And I set mine up to always be the Maya project folder. And the base file type is going to be PNG. Again, remember, that is for 8-bit outputs. And then I have cache to disk enabled by default. So whenever I create my substance node, it's going to set this up. And I don't have to worry about it again. One other thing I want to point out before we close out of the substance setting is the engine itself. Now, in this tutorial, I'm actually have this set to CPU, and you can see the loaded engine is set to CPU. But we have two variations of the Substance Engine. One is CPU, and one is GPU. And that's referring to the Substance Engine, which is computing our Substance textures. And is it going to do that CPU-based, or is it going to do that GPU-based? I would recommend setting this here to GPU. You'll have to do a restart in order for this to take effect, because the GPU engine is going to be uh, faster to compute the textures. The Substance Engine can do this computation faster on a GPU. Also, if you're using the CPU and you're using resolutions like 4K or higher, the CPU engine takes more time to compute or process those textures. So again, it's best probably just to set that to GPU. I'm going to leave it at CPU just for the rest of this video. All right, so let's close this out. And now let's start to create our textures. 
So what I'm going to do, if I come over here to our workflows and our output section, this is where I could come in if I would like, and I could create these outputs manually and then manually hook those into a material. And we'll do that later in the video. However, for now, I want to work with Arnold and I want to create an AI standard surface material. So I can simply use my renderer workflow set to Arnold and just click this Create Shader Network button. So I'm just going to do that. And you can see that the Substance plugin now generates for me all of the outputs that I need. So here I'm just going to go in and just reorganize here my outputs so we can see everything. Uh, also, because of the Maya preference, which is going to convert my textures to TX files automatically, you can see that that's taken care of. So here is the new structure that we get. So again, if we look, we have our Substance node. The Substance node now in the outputs has enabled specific outputs for the channels I'm going to be working with. For example, you'll notice here that I have base color and the output is active. Same thing with normal, my roughness, metallic, and height. So my basic channels in order to create the material that I want. So here, if we take a look at this node, this is my base color node. This is the substance texture that's generated by the, by the engine that's held in video RAM. And here we have some output information that's useful, like the identifier and the usage that was set inside of Substance Designer, as well as the format that we're going to be working with. I'd also like to note that if we wanted to, we could bake this file to disk as well. Now, because we had cache outputs enabled, and again, that setting is right here on the substance, from the substance output, the plugin has baked that texture, saved it in the location as set by the option I choose, which in my case was my Maya project directory. Then it's read that file back into Maya using a Maya file node. So here you'll see we have a standard Maya file node. It's loading in uh, that substance texture that's baked. Here is the uh, thumbnail and the color space is going to be set specifically for the type of texture you're working with. So for example, if I look at my roughness, I can see here, if I just come over to my roughness, that uh, it's been loaded in and its color space is set to raw. And so it's going to do that for all of the substance outputs that the plugin has created. Now let's say that I want to quickly find one of these uh, cached outputs here. Instead of navigating through uh, the nodes here in the hypershade, I can simply click the Find Node button. So I'm going to click this, and you can see that what it's going to do, and if I, it's going to select the node in the hypershade. If I hit the F key, it'll focus it. And here you can see that it's selected it. And then here in the Attribute Editor, um, I can see uh, all of the options that I have on this Maya file node. Now again, just to showcase what's happening here, uh, we have a few other nodes that's connected to produce my surface. In this particular case, what I'm doing here is using a multiply divide node to multiply the ambient occlusion uh, into the base color just to give it a little bit of that extra depth. And then if we come over, you can see that all that's connected to an Arnold uh, AI standard surface material. So now that this has been set up, I can just middle mouse, click and drag, and add this material here or assign it to any asset that I want in my Maya scene. So I'm just going to let go of my mouse, and you can see here that the material, the substance material, has been applied. And again, I'll zoom out here on the hypershade, and we can see this entire node network has been created for me just by simply creating my substance and choosing Create Shader Network for the given renderer workflow that I'm going to be using. Now we just go through the process of just changing some parameters to set up the material like we want. So what I'm going to do is zoom in here to my Place 2D Texture, and what I'm going to do is just tile this texture. So let's come into here and just tile this. Let's do a 2 by 2 here. So you can see that uh, the tiling is updating. I'm also going to just rotate my UV. So I'll type 90 into here. And now uh, the, you can see the result in the viewport renderer. The next thing I'm going to do is come over here to the Substance node itself. And I'm going to start working with some of the Substance parameters so that I can tweak this material to exactly what I want. So let's scroll down here in my attribute editor, and I want to bring your attention here to this preset section. So this new Maya plugin uh, can work with any of the embedded presets that are in Substance Materials. Now this particular substance doesn't have any, so I'm just going to create one. Let's say that I want to uh, start with what I have here as maybe a default. So I'm going to just create a preset, and I'm just going to call this default. And we'll click OK. And now I've created this default preset. Now I'm going to scroll down to my parameters. And I'm actually going to start to change things because I want to customize this, uh, customize this material, which is the entire point and power of, of using Substance here inside of Maya. I can do all this directly here in the UI. 
So what I'm going to do is come over to my color, and I think I'm just going to drop the value a bit. And I'm going to make this just a bit of a darker wood here. Then I'm going to come over to my wood roughness, and I'm going to just drop the wood roughness value. And so now we're getting a bit more uh, kind of a gloss or reflection here. Next thing I'm going to do is drop this bevel intensity down to maybe around, uh, well, close to 0.5 or so. And so again, I'm just looking at the feedback here in the viewport uh, just to make sure I'm getting what I want. So this is all well and good. Uh, one thing that I haven't actually done yet is I haven't changed my resolution. So let's scroll back up here towards the top, and sure enough, my width is set to 512, and it's locked. I have the lock ratio enabled, so it's just going to, just changing the width is automatically going to change the height. So let's go ahead and set this here to 2048. So that is going to recompute, or the Substance Engine is now recomputing all the textures. You can see here that uh, the Arnold plugin was automatically converting those to uh, TX files. Here in the status output, you can see uh, what happens when the substance render has completed. So once the substance engine has completed rendering, it'll let you know here in the status window. And now that the TX files have been created and updated, you can see here that my re Arnold render view is now refreshing. So now I am good to go here. And I think what I'd like to do is just come back to my presets and let's create another preset here. This time I'm going to enable this uh, dark, and we'll click OK. So now I have two presets. If I wanted to go back to my default, I could simply select it and then click the Apply button here, and that's going to change all of the substance parameters to get me back to that default state. Of course, we don't want that. I actually want to use my dark preset. No worries. I can just select the preset and click Apply, and it's going to reapply all of my preset values. So next I'm going to create a glass material using a custom substance. So here I just have an empty tab uh, open in the Hypershade, and I'm going to left click and drag in this custom substance file. So this is uh, AI glass underscore values dot SBSAR file. And you can see that it creates the substance node for me. So I'll left click on the substance node. I can see that the substance is loaded here. And if I scroll down to my outputs, I have uh, a specific set of outputs. Now, this particular custom substance is using what we refer to as value outputs. And you can see those here on the node itself. We have uh, a value output for IOR, depth, dispersion, and color. And the value output is a numeric value. So instead of representing, let's say, depth or IOR as a texture, I'm actually going to represent it as, as a numeric value. And this is a new feature that we added in Substance Engine version 7. We can author these values using the new value processor in Substance Designer. I will have a video tutorial that showcases how this particular substance was created, and you can find that on Substance Academy under the Substance Designer training. So here in the outputs, you can see the outputs that represent value data do not have a way to enable them. You actually work with that value directly off the Substance node itself. Now, this particular substance also has a procedural texture that represents my roughness, and I can enable this output by simply clicking this Activate Output button. Now, before I do that, I'm going to scroll up here to the top and, again, just mention that my cache output is enabled. My cache folder location is set to Project. So when I create this roughness texture output, the plugin will bake this texture. It's going to store it in this cache folder location, and then it's going to read that texture back into Maya using a Maya file node. All right, so before I can start working with the substance node, I am going to create a new Arnold material. So I'll hit the tab key. I'm going to start to type in AI standard, and I'm just going to use this AI standard surface. So now I'm going to just middle mouse, click and drag this material onto the bottle to apply it. Next, I want this to represent glass, so I'm going to come over to the transmission properties and I'm going to set the weight to a value of 1. So now we're starting to get uh, more of a glass look here to this material. Now we want to go through the process of hooking up or driving the Arnold material inputs by using the outputs from our substance. Because we're going to be working specifically with these value outputs, we can actually make the connection directly to the material. Now, 
Here, I'm also doing all of this process manually because what I'm going to do is once I have this set up, I can save all of the work that I'm doing here in the Hypershade as a custom render workflow that I can then call upon the next time I'm using a material like this. All right, so let's get uh, into the process of hooking everything up. So what I want to do first is work with my IOR. So I'm going to just left click out the IOR connection here, and I'm going to plug this as an input to the AI standard surface. I'm going to choose Other, and then from the input selection, I'm going to select Specular IOR. And now we have this connection being made. You'll notice that if I click the standard surface, and I take a look at the IOR underneath Specular, this is my Specular IOR, it's being now driven by the substance. I have a value of 1.52, and if I go back to my substance, and I will scroll down to where I have my actual substance parameters, here's where I have that input value, and it's set to 1.520. So again, what I can do is I can just numerically drive this value instead of trying to represent this as a texture. All right, so let's continue to hook up my material. I also have a depth setting here, so I'm just going to left click and drag out this connection, and I'm going to just plug this right into the transmission depth. So now that I'm here, I have my substance node selected already, I'm going to set my depth value to, well, I'm just going to set it to a value of 2. Depth is scene scale dependent, and it can have a dramatic effect. The transmission color and depth control transmittance absorption, and that depends a lot on object scale. So for like small objects, you might need to have like a low depth, and for a big object, you might need to have a high depth. So what I have next is my color, and if you look at my transmission color, if I click this plus sign, we can see that I actually have uh, components as part of this transmission color. This is a float 4 value in Substance Designer. So if we look at the values of 0, 1, 2, and 3, this correlates to R, G, B, and alpha. And we only need the RGB data. So I'm just going to expand the transmission color, and I have RGB. So let's just go ahead and hook this up. So we're going to take uh, uh, the red to the red. This will be green. We'll plug this into here. And then the blue, we don't have to worry about the alpha. So now I have this RGB value. In my substance, I probably could have just set this up as just a float 3 for color and not worry about this alpha at all. But you can see it works this way just as well. All right, so now that we have our color value, let's go ahead and set a color. So right now it's set to white, so I'm going to left click here the color, and I'm just going to choose a color. So I'm just going to tent this, and you can see that just by changing the substance properties, I'm feeding this data from the substance outputs directly into the Arnold material. Again, at this stage, we haven't created any textures yet. This is all just numeric data. So speaking of textures, uh, we also have our roughness, and we can start to work with that as well. So let me scroll up here towards the top, and you can see here that I have my output here for my roughness. So I'm just going to activate this output, and when I do that, you can see that it's going to generate for me the substance output, and you can see I have my output information here. For example, the format of this is a 16-bit. The substance output is then connected to a Maya file node. Like I said, because I have cache outputs to disk enabled, the texture is baked to disk and automatically read back into this Maya file node. Now I can take this Maya file node and just apply that directly to the uh, AI standard surface. So here I'm going to just simply middle mouse, click and drag this here to my roughness input. And now you can see that it's set to the specular roughness. Okay, so we can now also come back over here to our substance material. I'm just going to select the substance node. And I can make changes again to the uh, properties. So I have some parameters that are controlling uh, the roughness. I'm just going to set this you know, close to a value of uh, 0.5 or so. All right, so now we're starting to get uh, that roughness texture driving the specular roughness. One other thing that I want to do here is I want to work with my uh, dispersion. So let's just take a look here. You can see that I have this uh, dispersion output. So I'm just going to left click and drag the output of this, and I'm going to plug it into the input of the AI standard surface. We'll choose Other. And then here, I want to set this to Transmission Dispersion. So now we're starting to get some of that dispersion effect. All right, so now let's come back here to our Substance node. I'm going to just scroll up to where at the top of the parameters I have my resolution set to 512 for this particular roughness texture. I don't want that. I'm actually going to set this to a value of 2048. 
So here in the status, I can see that the substance render has completed. There was a quick flash on the screen. What that was was Arnold was converting this texture to a TX file. It was actually updating the TX file. So you can see that's handled automatically by Maya. And now I can see that I have my roughness map is appearing here on my glass. So that's pretty much gonna take care of this custom material setup I have. So again, I can just graph everything. We can see what we have is we have our substance. We have several of these value outputs are driving specific properties here into the AI standard surface uh, represented as numeric data. And then I also have a procedural texture, which is then driving the specular roughness. So let's say that this is something that I may use quite often when I'm working here inside of Arnold. So I can select my substance node, and then I can then just scroll down to where I have my render workflows, and I'm going to choose to add a new workflow. So I'll click the Add New Workflow button, and I am going to call this Arnold underscore glass, and then just click OK. So now you'll see under the renderer workflows, if I click this drop down, we now have this custom render workflow for Arnold Glass. So next time I go to use this, I don't have to set everything up manually. I can automatically just drag in my substance node and then just simply use my new glass workflow uh, to quickly create the shader network with a single button click. And you can add uh, any type of nodes that you want in the process here. So for example, the render workflow is gonna save everything that we see here in the hypershade. All right, so that is going to close out this video. We've taken a look at how to use the new Substance in Maya plugin here in Maya. I'm using 2019. We went through some of the overall basics on how you can import a substance material, work with the cache system, as well as outputs and render workflows. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.